Hello and welcome back to Indie Book Talk. Today we have Michelle Shores, who is the author of The Gathering Room, A Tale of Nellie Butler. Michelle, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I've really been looking forward to this. Okay, so first question. Uh, who's Nellie Butler? <laughs> now, the Nellie Butler hauntings are actually considered the first documented ghost sighting in America, and it happened right here in Maine in 1800. Ooh, weird. So it's a very fascinating piece of history. We're about so as Maine. usual, Maine is haunted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what part of Maine? It happened in, well, what became Sullivan and Franklin area, it, it happened in that area before those towns were really um, organized. Uh, so part of the haunting took place in Sullivan and some of the other folks that were involved in it actually lived across the bay in Franklin. So are you from that area or what brought on this interest for you? Well, actually, in 2015, I was looking for a book to read at Halloween, and because I'm a history buff and I traditionally read nonfiction books, I walked into a bookstore and I saw a nonfiction book uh, called the Nellie Bu a Documentary History of the Nellie Butler Hauntings. It was done by the University of Maine Press. And I picked it up, and it is um, transcripts of the historical documents that were taken that described this haunting and this appearance of this ghost. And I was terribly fascinated by it. And I wanted to know how the people that were involved in the sighting of this ghost found themselves in that position. And the historical record doesn't give any of the background or the interpersonal relationships. And I did a, quite a bit of research on it before one night I just woke up and I went, well, I'll just write what I think happened. <laughs> and so I initially started this for my own entertainment. And I worked on it for, well, for six years, actually, and uh, a little bit at a time. And I shared it with folks, and they encouraged me to get it published. So I went the self-publishing route, thinking that I would, you know, give a few books to my kids, my grandkids, and sell a few to friends to pay for it. Um, and then three months later, I had sold a thousand books and we're still selling books, <laughs> lots of books. Excellent. Okay. So that's where I want to start here, I think, because a thousand books in four months is, I think, for many indie authors would feel like a huge success. Mm -hmm. So what did you do to get to that thousand books in such a short time? Well, I inadvertently started marketing it without even realizing it. I belong to an online weight loss community that has their own social media. And as a lot of indie authors know now, going through the, the process of publishing is very stressful. And I'm a stress eater. So I would frequently hop on this alternate social media and I would tell everybody what I was doing and how I had just eaten my way through an entire bag of chips because of it. And so I re I was relating what was happening to me to my struggles with food. And what I didn't realize was happening was that I was building this large groundswell of potential readers. So the day that the books actually arrived on my doorstep and I snapped a photo of it because I was so excited, um, my website blew up. And my husband and I were up until midnight packaging books and not knowing at all what we were doing. We had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> um, but thankfully, uh, I went with Maine Authors Publishing and thankfully, um, within a few short weeks, they got the Amazon up and then that slowed our lives down just a little bit. But I was running to the, to the post office daily with 20 books, 15 oh, wow. books, So you're doing 30 this all books. on your own at first. Yeah, I know. Well, um, and the interesting thing was, is that that's how I ended up selling more books outside of the state of Maine than in the state. Um, I've sent books to just about every state in the country. I've sent them to the UK. I've sent them to Canada. Um, it's, it's really been phenomenal. It's a story that relates to a lot of people. So, I think that's really interesting because I've heard variations of this story before where... Yes. Someone um, builds a platform and basically sells books because they have the, these other connections. And oftentimes what happens is that they try to reverse engineer that. And so their, the advice that you get is, oh, build an author platform. I think the piece that's missing for a lot of people is that you built that with real connections about a real struggle you were having, mm -hmm. 
with people who shared some other interest with you. Some of those people probably bought the book because they like ghost stories, but some of them probably bought the book because they like Michelle, right? Right? Like (laughs) that personal connection really matters. And so when authors are building their platforms, I, I think that's a piece that's really missing for a lot of them is that this real connection with other humans is part of what sells books. Right. It's not just the book itself. Because you yeah, can't make absolutely. that by suddenly making up a, a book account somewhere and going, oh yeah, and like commenting on someone else's place and hoping they comment on ours. It comes across as fake versus yours is very much you. You were actually having issues with it while writing. So it was it was more your people versus a forced approach which is um, where people have a lot of downfalls because they're trying to force it instead of it being people they naturally would connect with. Yeah. And one of the things I did this fall too, was I, I got on again, totally by accident. I got into the craft fair circuit. Uh, So my husband and I belong to the lions club uh, and our local lions club was having a craft fair and they had a few extra tables they hadn't sold. So I said, well, I'll buy a table. Can, you know, I'll rent a table. Can I sell books? And they were like, sure. And I couldn't believe how many books I sold in just a matter of a few hours. So I was like, well, this is a good idea. So I started signing up and I ended up uh, from October to December, I was at a different craft fair, vendor fair every weekend, right through the entire holidays. And that helped a lot. I have a background in sales and marketing uh, in my career. So I'm a very people person and I can talk to just about anybody. So being out in public and being able to talk to people face to face about my book made a huge difference. I sold a ton of books that way. And then it just has snowballed and you know initially from the the social media has snowballed outside of the state and then the craft fairs uh, within the state. It just keeps snowballing and snowballing. So will you keep up the craft fairs now as things keep continuing to grow? I got one next weekend. (laughs) I actually have two this month. (laughs) So yeah, and uh, and I've partnered with a couple other authors from Maine Authors Publishing. And so the three of us together are going to do some of those larger vendor fairs where where the um, entrance fee is a little higher, but we can split it up three ways and that makes it much more affordable. You know, the, the thing to keep in mind, you know, because I have a ton of marketing ideas because of, of my background. So I'm like, Oh, I could do this. And Oh, I could do that. But the reality is I'm selling a $20 book, you know? So <laughs> I have to keep my investment in what I'm trying to do realistic. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause if you have to pay a thousand dollars for a table at, you know, some fancy event, yes, you have to sell a lot of books to make back that. Yes. Yeah. Investment. And it's the same way with um, any kind of advertising. If you're doing, I did do some Facebook, uh, paid Facebook ads uh, through an agency mm-hmm. uh, for Halloween. I did that because it's a ghost story. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that worked. I targeted, so I targeted zip codes around the country where I had already had large sales from the social media piece. So but again, you've got to keep in mind what, how much you want to invest, particularly when we're doing this as self-published authors. Right. Okay. So what because you had that, that. Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, it was, I was kind of the same question, Shelley, as you were asking, which is you have this marketing background. So did you have other, like, did you have an actual marketing plan or any strategy um, aside from these accidental things that you've been falling into? No, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just trying anything. Um, the thing you've got to remember most is you've got to un- identify who your who your audience is. Mm-hmm. And I know that my audience are obviously history buffs and um, middle aged to older women. Although it really has surprised me how many men uh, are buying the book and have enjoyed it. That that's the piece that shocked me the most. But you've got to figure out where your where your audience is. Now I know the majority of my audience is on Facebook. Um, a few are on Instagram, and nobody's on TikTok. So, you know, so that's not, you know, that's not my audience. You, you need to know who your audience is and where they are, and then just target them and go over and over again. I've talked to a lot of authors and, and they say to me, oh, I, I posted, I posted on Facebook two days in a row and I didn't get any sales. Well, that's not really how this works. You know, how many times do you see an ad on TV for L.L. Bean, but you don't run out and buy a coat? 
or mm -hmm. Domino's and you don't immediately go and get a pizza. But you need to maintain top of mind awareness with readers and with your followers as well. I, I can't tell you how many times I went out this fall and I'd be at a craft fair or something. And I have a big, large pull-up banner with the cover of my book on it and everything. And, and people would say, oh, I've heard of this book. And I said, oh, you have? Where did you hear about it? Oh, I don't know, but it seems like it's everywhere. Yes, because it is. <laughs> because I'm working very hard at making it everywhere. So um, I also paid for, and it was actually very inexpensive, um, ads on placemats. Uh, because... Oh. I'm, I'm an old middle-aged lady. And when I go out to eat at the Purple Cow in Fairfield with my husband and I'm drinking my coffee, I, I look at the placemat. So I thought, well, what maybe other people my age are doing that. So I'm actually on lots of placemats as well. So, that is so um, interesting. <laughs> there you go, guys. Ad placement we've never talked about before. Yeah. Placemats. And actually, that's I don't know if it's Shelly, you tell me, in other places, because Shelly lives in Virginia, have you seen this? Like in Maine, it's a big thing where if you go to any sort of like local place, they have placemats with ads from local companies. Only in the more um, rural parts of Virginia, not up in North Yeah, well, welcome to Maine. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I did pay for some newspaper. I have a newspaper advertising background. That's actually where I started. Um, and so I did pay for some newspaper advertising, but I only did it, you know, for Halloween, for October coming into mm -hmm. Halloween. And I did, I did get people say, Oh, I saw this in the paper. And I'm like, Oh, good. You know, so you just have to try everything. I'm incredibly annoying because I'm a salesperson. So I've been known to, st I, and I did do it. I was stand I, every time I went to the post office during Christmas rush, I'd stand there and I'd turn and look at people and I'd go, whew, I'm mailing out these books. Boy, I hope they get to people before Christmas. And they'd be like, you're mailing out books? What book? Yeah, I wrote a book. You wrote a book? Yeah, let me tell you all about it. And here's I happen business to card. have a copy of That's... this book. <laughs> this book right here. It could be yours for only $19.99. <laughs> Actually, I did the exact same thing today. I was in a craft fair. I mean, not a craft fair, a craft store. And there was an older lady there and we just started talking and the conversation was going in a direction where I thought I could throw in the book and I threw in the book and before I knew it I was giving her my business card with my website on it so you just have to be absolutely shameless it's self-promotion so you just have to do it that is so hard for I, a lot of authors though I know yes a lot of us yeah. are introverts <laughs> yeah well, I have a friend that we've reviewed his book on the show before, Scribes Descent, and he's on Twitter and he'll be constantly talking about how on Twitter he's like, oh, yeah, today I went to like, you know, my daughter's coding tournament or something and we I sold 12 books. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, are you just like sitting in the stands at sporting events being like, here's a book. Yeah. Would you like it? Like, I feel like that's what he's doing, but it's working really well for him. Um, I think I would be too embarrassed to, and that's why I make my mom do it for me most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> need a jacket on. Ask me about my book. <laughs> yeah. I have a button. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I, well, I, again, I've been in sales, so I love to talk to people. So I just, I just chat with everybody. Uh, anybody and everybody. And I, my mind is constantly running in the background, throw in the book, throw in the book. How can I throw in the book? Um, I was, well, I went to Panera with another author to, to have lunch so that we could discuss, you know, helping her with her marketing. And, and uh, I just threw it right out there to the cashier. I said, Oh, I'm paying for her lunch today. Cause we're here to market, talk about marketing books. And the girl kind of looked at me and I said, yeah, I wrote a book and I'm helping her with marketing. You wrote a book? Yes, I did. And here's my business card. And the other author, she's like, I don't even have business cards. And I'm like, well, you got to get them quick. <laughs> so. so do you recommend that, that authors get business cards? Absolutely. My business card is very basic. Oh, shoot. I don't have one just handy. I, I just have my website on the front um, because I have a contact form on my website, so I don't give out my email address. And then on the bath back, I just have Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram logos. And I got at M Shores Writer because okay. you can find me everywhere under at M Shores Writer. And so that's what I tell people. And then if I fe need, feel the need, I need to add anything else, write the title of the book. Or, or if it's a bookstore and I'm dropping off books, I'll throw my phone number on there. But for the most part, I, it's very, very simple. My social media on one side, my website on the other. 
So have you done any like signings at bookstores or is that? Oh my goodness. Yes. (laughs) Yes. We've been everywhere. (laughs) Well, it's everywhere, you know, people see it. So, um, yeah, I've done bookstore signings. I've got more signings coming up. Um, I've spoken at historical societies and at libraries and colleges. And so it's, it's, it's been a wild ride. I, I can't believe it's really been only been six months and it's insane. Are you retired or like, are you working and also doing all of this? <laughs> well, that's a really funny question. So uh, <laughs> I am currently working, um, but my husband and I are discussing the possibilities of of making some changes. So, yeah. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so what is next on your marketing journey? What are you hoping to try next? On my marketing journey, oh, I uh, just keep plugging away and trying to think up as many things as I possibly can. Uh, one of the things I just got a commitment for is I have an inn uh, down on the coast that's going to put the book in every uh, every room they have. So that's something that I want to try to work more uh, with other lodging establishments. So that's on my agenda for coming up on audible book. I have so many people asking me about audible and that, that Mm -hmm. requires technology. So that makes me very nervous. So I've kind of put it on a back burner, but I don't think I can do that anymore. So I really think I need to, to tackle that horse. Um, And then I am working on a second book because everybody's begging me for one. And I am taking a research trip in the coming weeks to work on that. So you need to follow me on social media to figure out where I'm going. Oh, so we, we don't know what it's on yet. Uh, no, no, not yet. <laughs> it's a super secret surprise. Super secret. Can we go back for a second to this books in an inn or in the rooms at a, at a hotel? Now you've given ideas. How does... <laughs> how do, no, well I'm curious how it works because like is it like a consignment thing where you give them books and then if they disappear they pay for them or do, do they pay for them like how does that I'm so completely I lost on the business side of yeah, this I, I stumbled across something on social media called bedside reading and you know they they put your books so you know if you sign up and apply and this and that and the other thing they'll put your books in the boutique hotels in the hamptons and blah 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 and i'm like well that's wonderful but we got places like that right here in maine uh so i guess it's because of my my job i i have connections and so i spoke to someone one of the inns down on the coast and i said what do you think of this and he was like yeah that's fine so he bought he bought the books he bought them okay back. so he bought them yeah he bought them uh, what he chooses to do with them, whether, uh, you know, somebody wanders off with them and then he calls me and wants to replace it. We'll, we'll see. I, I don't know yet. That was the first one. So, um, that's a cool idea. This is a fabulous idea for your upcoming book, Shelley. I was thinking that too. I just actually made a little note for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I could help. <laughs> Well, specifically because her book involves a bed and breakfast and some, you know, m- like cozy mystery shenanigans. And I think it would be amazing. Yes, for... I While you're staying at the inn, read this nice book about an inn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Just... So if anyone who's listening has an inn, call Shelly. <laughs> She'll get you all set up. Right, really? Uh, you, can, you can get to us at uh, IndieBookPodcast at gmail.com there. Um. Speaking of where you can find us, Michelle, you've mentioned it a couple of times, but I'm going to do the formal request. Where can people find you on the internet? Oh, absolutely. Find me on social media. I, I love it there and I'm very interactive. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at M Shores Writer. So that's M for Michelle, Shores like the shores of a lake and writer because that's what I do. Uh, I also have a website. It's shockingly mshoreswriter.com. I'm also on YouTube, <laughs> although uh, I, nice. I have a promo. I have a really cool promo video for the book. That's another thing we didn't really touch on. But uh, if anyone wants to check out my promo video, it is pinned on all of my social media accounts, but it does live at Mshore's Writer on YouTube.com. Okay. So also, if you are on YouTube right now watching this episode, go over there. If you're uh, over there, when you're over there, you'll probably see we can do some cross promotion across our two YouTube channels, right? That's a thing. I don't know how it works, but I know it <laughs> exists. Technology, but so I, we'll figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> and by the way, she wrote a book. And by the way, she wrote a book, yes. and it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being on the show, for dropping your marketing wisdom on us. 
um, I'm going to have to go buy your book now. I say that all the time and I usually do. So, right. I do. It's really bad. I have a problem, guys. You don't know. Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for being on the sh- show, Michelle. It was great to talk to you. Oh, guys, thank you so much. I'm, I'm just having a blast and, and this is just adding to my experience. I love it. Thank you. <laughs>